Roger Nash Baldwin helped found the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, in 1920. He served as executive director until 1950. Roger earned his bachelor's and master's degrees at Harvard and taught sociology at Washington University in St. Louis. He was chief probation officer of the St. Louis Juvenile Court and co-wrote Juvenile Courts and Probation with Bernard Flexner. The book was influential and helped make his national reputation. Roger was a lifelong pacifist. He helped form the American Union Against Militarism in response to World War I and spent a year in jail as a conscientious objector. In 1917, the AUAM added a legal division to protect the rights of objectors. The AUAM might have faded away if not for the Palmer raids of 1919 and 1920. Palmer was the eternal January, general during the 1919 Red Scare. Uh, now the Red Scare, I will admit, was not invented from whole cloth. Several countries had seen communist violence. In the US, strikes paralyzed Seattle and the steel and coal industries, and anarchists sent over 40 bombs through the mail to people including an ex-senator in Georgia, the mayor of Seattle, John D. Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, a New York City judge, and not incidentally, Palmer himself, and the last straw, Oliver Wendell Holmes. Leave my famous Unitarians alone. Palmer's response, though, was draconian and illegal. 4,000 people were arrested, often without due process, and Palmer tried to deport almost all of them. Only the opposition of the Secretary of Labor limited the deportees to just 556. Palmer's version of McCarthyism collapsed after May 1st, 1920, the day when he warned would see a huge leftist uprising, and it passed without incident. So this was all alarming. Roger and his friends renamed their legal department the American Civil Liberties Union, with Roger continuing as executive director. Since then, the ACLU has taken part in more Supreme Court cases than anyone except the U.S. Department of Justice. Although criticized as anti-religious, pro-criminal, and liberal, the ACLU has defended many churches, law enforcement organizations, and conservatives, including Oliver North in 1988 and Rush Limbaugh in 2004. Many ACLU landmark cases took place under Roger's direction. In 1921, they protested the murder trial of anarchist immigrants Sacco and Vanzetti. Uh, we'll never know if they were guilty, but it's very clear that they were railroaded. On the 50th anniversary of their deaths, Governor Mike Dukakis of Massachusetts proclaimed that Sacco and Vanzetti had been treated unjustly and that no stigma should attach to their names. In 1925, the ACLU engineered the arrest of teacher John Scopes to challenge a Tennessee ban on teaching evolution. Superstar lawyers Clarence Darrow and William Jennings Bryan squared off and made headlines across the country. Scopes lost in court, as intended, since the goal was to reach the Supreme Court and change the law but uh, Darrell won in the Court of Public Opinion. In 1933, the ACLU imported and caused to be seized a copy of James Joyce's Ulysses, which was banned as obscene. ACLU General Counsel Morris Ernst won that one for Random House publisher Bennett Cerf. Ulysses and similar books are now sold everywhere. In 1942, the ACLU fought the internment of 110,000 Japanese Americans. And we will continue to see them surface now and then in future talks because Unitarians have often fought in court for a free and fair society and the ACLU has often fought beside them. In 1927, Roger visited the Soviet Union and wrote a pro-Soviet book, Liberty Under the Soviets. However, as more and more was learned about Stalin's regime, he became disillusioned and called communism a new slavery, capitals in the original. 
In the 1940s, Baldwin, Baldwin led a campaign to purge the ACLU of Communist Party members. In 1947, General MacArthur invited Roger to Japan to foster the growth of civil liberties in that country. He founded the Japanese Civil Liberties Union and the Japanese government awarded him the Order of the Rising Sun. In 1948, Germany and Austria invited him for the same purpose. Roger retired from the ACLU in 1950. He remained active in politics for the rest of his life. For example, he co-founded the International League for the Rights of Man, now known as the International League for Human Rights. Jimmy Carter awarded him the Medal of Freedom on January 16, 1981. I end with a quote. So long as we have enough people in this country willing to fight for their rights, we'll be called a democracy. Silence never won rights. They are not handed down from above. They are forced by pressures from below.